Hi, um, I'm Brent, and I'm going to teach you how to play a tune by uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan called Lenny. Um, this lesson is going to be in two parts, really. Um, the first is probably more uh, directed towards beginners, um, beginners and, and, and intermediate. I'm uh, going to go into how to play the chords and, and a couple of the fills. And the song is actually uh, a lot simpler than it looks, um, or than it sounds. And uh, then what I'm going to get into is probably some more advanced stuff, um, and, and how you play over those changes. Um, and I'm going to assume you already know how to play uh, for the changes, you know, you know, the basic pentatonic box patterns and, uh, you know, you know mixolydian. And what I'm going to show you how to do is kind of use those to play over the chords instead of just playing one single scale over the entire passage, how to mix up the scales and, and, and really make your soloing move. And... Uh, I know that just for me personally, when, when, once I discovered a couple things about how you change around the blue scales over the different chords, um, a whole lot of doors opened for me, and, and, and it really helped, helped me in terms of, of, of learning how to improvise over the blues and, and also to get the, the, get the correct delivery so that it, I sounded more like a blues player and less like a, a, a heavy metal rock player trying to sound like a blues player, if that makes sense. So... Hopefully there will be a little something for everybody in this lesson. So first of all, let's let's talk about just the, the basic uh, basic way the, the song is laid out. Um, there's really only two shapes, um, two chord shapes that you have to think about. Um, the first one is based off E major seven. It's just an, it's an E major seven um, slash six. I think if you really want to get technical about what you call it. Um, and you don't play the, the low E string. On the A string, it's seventh, the seventh fret. On the D string, it's the ninth. On the G string, it's the eighth. On the B string, it's the ninth. And on the high E string, it's the ninth. So it's basically an E major seventh chord with the C sharp in the, in the, uh, as a melody note, which would be the, the sixth. And then the next chord is an A sixth. Um, and it's basically, um, you play the, uh, the low E, the fifth fret, um, you skip the A string on the D string, um, fourth fret, um, G string, uh, six and B string, fifth, the fifth fret, and, uh, you don't play the high E. So remember that shape because that shape is going to come around, is going to be slid up and down the neck and then turn around. So the basic... The basic layout of the song is and then he throws a couple uh, E major licks in there as well. Um, the first one is to uh, move you from the E down to the A. Um, high E string, 7th fret. Um, then on the B string, 7th slide up to the 9th. Back down to the 7th. G string, 9th fret. And then with your thumb, grab the A to start your A chord. So. And then um, he does another little major lick that um, you use to walk back, to get back up to the E chord. Um, um, start on the low E string, um, seventh fret, slide up to ninth. On the uh, A string, play the seventh fret, and with your, uh, with your ring finger, slide uh, from ninth to eleventh. And then what you want to do is you want to grab the, uh, the D, G, and B strings all together um, at the at the ninth fret, basically just off an E major chord, basically. And then you do a hammer on from on the G string from uh, from nine to eleven, and then you do sort of trill again on the uh, on the D string, nine to eleven. So the whole the whole cycle is this. And 
then the only thing you really have to think about as well is, is the turnaround. So if you come off the end, you walk up to B, remember you're holding the same shape to D, down to G, A sharp to A. And really that's all. So, I'm not going to get into how you play the actual solo, I and mean, you can get the tabs for that. But what I'm going to show you is some, uh, some ways to play over these chords. Um, and uh, the first thing you have to recognize is this is a blues. Um, this is the one chord, the E. This is the four chord. It's a one four five, um, and it you know doesn't really sound. It's think of it that way. I mean, think of it as you were playing a as a shuffle sort of thing. Um, now, what I'm going to show you is is how do you which, which you should play over those chords. I mean, first of all, now that you know that it's a blues, um, you can play, you know, that, that, e, that e blues um, kind of minor pentatonic um, scale. You can play the E major scale. E, or you can play even mixolydian if you want. But one of the things that I found helps the, the, the soloing really move is changing the scale you play over the chords. And here's what I mean. Over the, uh, over the E chord, over the one chord, try playing major. Then over the four chord, play minor. that alternating between major and minor, first of all, that's, that's what Stevie does a lot, and it's what all the great blues players do. I mean, you know, anybody from him to um, Hendrix does it, um, Albert Collins, I mean, all of those guys, uh, they make their solos really move um, by playing over the chords, and one of the things that you can do with that is that if you're not relying on speed all the time to make your solos interesting, um, when you do, you know, pull out your, you know, your fast licks from your bag of tricks, it's a lot more effective um, because the solo is moving anyway. So think about that as you're playing it. Over one, over four, minor. And, you know, just a hint for, for rock players out there that have really focused more on the, on the minor sort of tonalities. Um, you know, if you don't have a lot of major licks in your, in your in your vocabulary, what you can do is take your licks for when you want to play over the major scale, take your licks that you're familiar with um, and move them down a minor third, and that makes it major because you're just playing in the relative minor. Um, so, I mean, I'll play the same lick just in the different in the different positions, and you can see how it still moves. See how that how that works, and you can and you can really um, mix up your playing a lot. And I think that uh, that'll give you some. It, it certainly opened up a, a ton of doors for me when I when I when I finally had that shown to me. And uh, I think it really helped uh, you know make my playing more interesting and uh, less reliant on speed. So hopefully you got some value out of this lesson. And uh, thanks for listening.